Couch Couch Sports Podcast, episode number 189. Nick Qualia, Jared Scally, Al Nahigan. Take number two. I'm back this week after a hiatus from last week. We got a lot to talk about, which means nearly the weekly dump, very small. Basically, just one thing that I wanted to talk about with you guys. But we've got a list of stuff to talk about. Right down to the Celtics starting off hot. Maybe some more, and it's been a few weeks since there's been deep rumors, but some more James Harden talk Mm. because I want to revisit that now because – You can't get your ass off James Harden, can you? I can't, but the problem is – The problem is Jalen Brown, who, remember, is the the centerpiece of this trade rumor, has been hot. He's been one of the best players in the league. Yeah, remember when you wanted to trade him for James Harden straight up? Yeah, you're an idiot for that one. Listen, no. Yes. You did. Yes. No. No, you did. no, 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 no. I'm, I did 100%, but I'm not an idiot for it. No, you are. You're an no, idiot. No, you no, 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 no. Yes. Listen, it, it, would, it, would, be, it would be a bad idiotic. trade now. If you did that idiotic. straight up, 100%, it would be a bad trade. But Horrible. But, I, I mean, at the time, and even still, like even James Harden coming in a little chunky with that, that first night thick picture of James Harden, he's still James Harden. Dominating. It really, it really seems, yeah, it really seems to have not taken any toll. Does his attitude suck? Sure. Is he chucking balls at the rookies? Sure. But he's still James Harden. He still looks like James. Yeah, do you want do you want coming in James Harden coming in just chucking balls at Pritchard? No. Well, no, because <laughs> let me talk about Pritchard too. This kid, I mean, he looks like a steal. Steal of the draft. We'll talk He's, about him. We'll get into detail. I love I love Peyton Pritchard. We'll we'll talk about him, and we're gonna talk Cam Newton whether or not he's gonna come back. We're gonna talk about the Patriots off season. Uh, bye, and bye 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 Cam. Bye bye. A lot more surrounding the Patriots. But first, let's just get through the weekly dump quick. It's only one thing. I just wanted to touch on this because I find it hilarious. The NHL sold the naming rights of the divisions. Yeah, yeah. Isn't the North? The North is like the North Scotia division or something like that. So I've got them right here. The Scotia NHL North division. The Honda West division. The Discover Central division. And the East, home of the Boston Bruins, is the Mass Mutual NHL East Division. Mm, good old Mass Mutual. So it seems, I think, from what I understand, they're only doing it for one year. Oh, I think it was this or, like, helmet ads. I think that was the, the okay. decision there. Yeah, so, so they're only doing this for one year. It's to, it's to recoup a lot of the lost revenue, obviously, from the coronavirus issue. Uh, kind of a problem. But, I mean, honestly... So I saw some guy, he might have been the first person to like really tweet it and, and his tweets been bounced around. He said it was something something about puke and like it's a puke moment or something like that. He just was really grossed out by the NHL doing this. I'm like, why? Is it really good? I hate those I hate those people. Is it really gonna affect you that the Boston Bruins out playing the mass mutual East Division? Well, even in basketball, like all those people that are so pukey on, like, oh, why are you putting ads in the jerseys? Do you even notice them? Right. Like, like as long as it's not oh. like soccer, like, who cares? Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna so work stupid. yourself up over that. Whatever. That was literally the only thing in the weekly dump. And before we get into a new little segment, guys, we just talked to Jared's child, and she's totally cool with having the middle name Manscaped. We just checked with her. Guys, support for the Couch Guy Sports Podcast comes from Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Jingle balls to the walls, fellas. Listen up. We're a little after Christmas, but that's okay. Untrimmed pubes are a thing of the past. It's time to gear up and get yourself the gift of shaving this holiday season. I am talking about the Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0. Talked about this a million times. Clip and nut sex. Do you guys have any any weird manscaped accidents in the past? No, I just I just, just talk about myself. I, I, de- my I default to you clipping your nuts, yeah. but I just use that one. It's a good okay, one. Okay, well it was it was a traumatic experience. I could never use those those clippers again. Honestly, I'm traumatized 
with you for that experience. Oh, it that. was it was painful. And the worst part is I told one of my friends when we were younger too, I was like, hey, this is what you got to do. Same thing happened to him. So <laughs> terrible decision all the way around. Whoopsies. Guys, that's why this revolutionary company, Manscaped, has redesigned the electric trimmer. Their lawnmower 3.0 has the proprietary advanced skin-safe technology. So this trimmer cuts on your nuts, and it's also waterproof, so you can use it in the shower. Mine is still sitting in the shower because I have not taken it out yet. The lawnmower 3.0 comes inside their brand-new Perfect Package 3.0 which makes for the perfect gift this holiday season. It's literally everything that you need to keep trimmed, cut free, and smelling nice down there. And don't use the same trimmer on your face as, you, as you're using on your balls. That's fucking disgusting. The Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0, and the fact is, by the way, the fact is, I don't know that people do that, but I'm going to assume that I know that people do that. So don't do that. Just get, get a designated trimmer for your balls. Guys, the Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0 also includes the Crop Preserver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant, perfect for the golf course, and moisturizer. You already put deodorant on your armpits. Why are you not putting deodorant on the smelliest part of your body? Yeah, guys, your balls smell disgusting. Check it out. It's gross. Speaking of sweaty and sticky balls, I am thankful for the Crop Reviver. This product, along with the Crop Preserver, keeps your balls from sweating, smelling, and sticking. And these products smell good. Their manly scent is attractive and will help set the mood, if you know what I mean. We're talking sex. The perfect package will also come with a pair of Manscaped boxer briefs, also good for the golf course, that'll keep your junk feeling fresh all day. It's time to upgrade those overused pair of boxers to Manscaped's high-performance anti-chafing boxers. Tis the season of Manscaped, so get yourself, your dad, your brother, and your friends the best gift of all the Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0. We're, again, we're after Christmas, but still, just be generous. Just get them the gift. Get 20% off of the free shipping with the code couchguy 20 at manscaped.com. Your balls and your friend's balls, they're going to thank you. Get 20% off with free shipping with the code couchguy 20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com using promo code couchguy 20 C-O-U-C-H-G-U-I-2-0. Clean up your nuts and make Santa and the lady in your life proud of you or men whatever you want make them proud of you manscaped no good, good recovery at the end there no hey, judgment i'm here for the people all right good. Good. so i legitimately wanted to add this segment because i know i'm in the minority here but i wanted to, and I, I didn't want to make it a full segment here with just this topic or we could if you guys wanted to but Look, I, Zidane Ochar is my favorite player. This is the opening takes. New segment on Couch Guy Sports Podcast. Zidane Ochar is my favorite Boston Bruin of all time in my lifetime. I've been watching this guy forever. And does it suck that we lost him? Sure. Does the price tag make it look even worse? Sure. 750000 I think it was. But, yeah. guys, every single year, you check Twitter. You talk to your friends who are Bruins fans. You're like, man, Chara looks old. Man, Chara looks slow. Man, he keeps getting burned in the postseason. The power play, fa it's a faster game. He's on your power play line, and he's getting burned. I love Zidane Ochara. Do I wish he was on the team? Yeah, sure. Would I, would have, I, would I have been upset if the Bruins gave Chara that same contract? No. But do I understand the move? Yeah. I'm not upset at the Bruins for making this move. The guy is old. Again, we have the conversation every single year at the end of the season, the past couple of years, and in the playoffs. He's old. He's slow. He's getting burned. It was time. I think I'm the not reason be why upset. a lot of fans are pissed and, like, I, I don't know. I think the big thing for me is, like, I don't say people like you because I'm in the same boat of, like, I'm not completely mad about it. But everyone's like, oh, he looked slow. Like, especially they use last year as the example. It's like he had, like, four months off, right, between the end of the season and the bubble. People forget they were they were rocking and rolling the best team in hockey by far before the shutdown. And if they kept going, he wouldn't have looked as slow as he did in the bubble. He had to not play for three months, like for whatever it was. So I think it looked worse this year than it did in past years because of the time off. And like you think about in normal seasons, like Char has time to build back up. He has camp. He has the beginning of seasons. Like, And if you look back and think about it, Char never looks good at the beginning of years because he has to get ramped up too. So people are looking at the bubble as a – overreaction in my opinion because of that but i'm okay with this like if you want to go young you want to go young the only reason why i'm mad is because that he could be a valuable second third line defenseman on a cup team which is what you're apparently you're trying to be 
yet you want to pay they don't Johnny know Moore. they don't know if they want to be a cup team but like they, they have no idea do. like they clearly do of crates why is david crazy so on this team that if they want but, to be a but cup that's team? that's like, my point they don't know if they want to be a cup team because you've still got the core that would keep the championship window open with bergeron with marshan uh with crazy with tuka but then at the same time the defensive and this is where I, i'm okay with people being upset the defensive pairings are gross Garbage. It sucks. It sucks. Off it. Their, their and, defense isn't good. Like it's Charlie and, McAvoy and then nothing. And not only that, too, you got to think about this, too. You gave Kevin Miller $1.3 million. You're nearly doubling his salary. The guy hasn't taken the ice in two years. I'm going to credit Jack Riley of taking it or leaving for that little tidbit. And by the way, you also lost Tory Krug, too, in free agency. He's with St. Louis now. So it's like you lose two defensemen and you didn't replace anybody. So if you want Char gone, you should have kept Krug, and then you wouldn't have had this problem. But you got rid of two of them, and you didn't replace them. That's the whole problem here. I like wish I wish they held on. I wish they held on to Krug, sure. But the thing with keeping Krug that is also just being blown over is if if you want to focus on if you want to if you want to prepare for the future of this team, if you do sign Krug. The Bruins basically had to decide, do we want to sign Krug or do we want to hold on to our young piece of Grizzlick and Carlo because there's an expansion draft coming this year. Yep. But the Seattle Kraken, you the sign Kraken. Krug, you're going to probably lose either Carlo or Grizzlick. And they love the both expansion of them. draft. And they do love both of them. They, oh. they clearly see those two guys as a big part of the future here. Because Carlo also, he just signed a new deal a couple of years ago. Yep. Hey, listen, listen, we have inside sources to the Seattle Kraken, so maybe we can find out what we're doing. And if you don't know what the source is, I'll tell you after the show. No, I, I do know. I do, yeah. I do know what the source okay, is. Okay, good, good. Okay, just making sure you know the source. Just making sure. But, but I mean, it's it's a tough situation. I get it. Like again, would have I loved to see Jara back on this team? Yes, absolutely. He's my favorite Bruin of all time. But I get oh, come on why now. Ray Bork. Ray Bork. They did well. He's my like my person that I watched. I current, 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 current. It, I could I could type in YouTube videos of Ray Bork, but I don't. I'm, come on, I don't remember when. When did Char get here? Like 2014 years, something like yeah, that. Yeah, so, so 2005, 2006, somewhere around there. Around. Yeah, I was like yeah. 11 years old. It's funny when you see side note, Char. It's funny when you see Ottawa Senators fans trying to claim Char. It's like, bro, yeah, he's a, he's, no, a he's, he's, he's a Bruin. He's a Bruin. Like, stop. He's a Bruin. He's a Bruin. He's what a Bruin. also does hurt though is when you look at the players that have left Boston over the past year. Uh, yeah, 2020 Brady, man. Thank it God. sucked. It sucked, and it was like it was right at the end Mookie, of 2020. Brady, now oh, it's just awful. Mookie, yeah, two, Brady, uh, Tory Krug, <laughs> Tory Krug, Chara, Gordon Hayward, Hayward, Gordon Hayward, Gordon Hayward. You can count right, Gordon Hayward. Yeah. And it was and it was 2006. I just confirmed. Tor, I count came David here. Price. Char David came Price. here. Char came here and signed a five-year, thirty-seven point five million dollar contract the first day of free agency on July first, 2006. All I'm saying is I, I get it. I understand it. I'm just I, I saw a lot of people just pissed at the Bruins, and I get to be pissed that they didn't do anything else. But you also have to realize too, like because he's getting older, they offered him allegedly, right? This is reports that they part of the discussion was okay. You're not going to play back to backs, and he didn't want to do that. He wanted to be the captain who's out there every night. You're not going to play back to backs. You're not going to be on the first line. He doesn't want to do that. What are you supposed to do? I mean, he's not going to do that in Washington either. I highly doubt it. Like, Well, I mean, look at Washington's team. They're sure. a nursery home. They're old. They're an old team down there. So, honestly, he'll probably get the role that he wants. And plus, with the captain, with the C on, your, on his sweater, he wants to be that guy. The Bruins just didn't have that role for him anymore. And he didn't want to come back because of that because he wasn't going to get Patrice the role. Patrice Bergeron will be your yeah. captain. Yep, it opens the door for Bergeron to officially wear that C on his chest, which he should have been for the last couple of years. But they're going to be a playoff team. They're going to be a playoff team this year. I think if everything bounces right, right, and they stay healthy, like I think that they, if if they can figure out the D core, like even at all, like they're still I think a contender. It's just it's just not going to be as easy, and they won't be the best team in the league. Like no. Yeah. So that was it. Do you guys have anything with that, or you want to just move on? Move, move on. on. Okay. Something else I want to talk about outside of Boston sports. I'm with the Giants. I'm pissed at the Eagles. If I'm the Giants, I don't care they had six wins. They had a chance of the division. I'm pissed. Do they have a right to whine? I don't know. Probably not. Because, yeah, you had six wins. But 
that was gross. Is See, what Doug Peterson did. That was gross. I'm, I'm not mad about it. Like, dude, you want to lose, you want to lose. That's fine. Like, whatever. I'm mad at the Giants for coming out and be like, bro, I they ruined our chances. No, you ruined your chances. You went six and six, ten. Six wins. I I'm you went the, six and ten and are pissed at someone losing. I'm if with you the win Giants. One more game. I'm with the Giants in regards to just being pissed. But again, whiny. I don't know because yeah, you had six wins. But like you're a crap team. You don't deserve to be in the playoffs. None of you do. I, if I if I was if I was Goodell, I'd say ah, Tom Brady, you can have a bye. We're not going to make you play the Washington Football Team. Uh, they suck too. So we're just going to let every like the NFC is just not allowed in this year. That's what I would have done. They suck. If, if you're going to throw the game, don't even start Jalen Hurts. Like why'd you do that? You pulled him out 17-14. You couldn't even make it look like you were pulling up because you're getting smoked. <laughs> Yeah, make up a phony injury. Be like, yeah, he got some hamstring tightness. We're not going to risk it last game of the year. And then that's how you do it. Not – let's pull him out. No, I, I don't, I'm not mad with him tanking by any means. But, like, you're right. You could have done it a better way. Why, why do we care so much? The NFC East winner who was the Washington football team is just going to get destroyed on Saturday anyway. I really don't care. I really don't care. Well, I don't. especially Young, with man. Chase Young. Chase Young wants Tom Brady. I want Tom Brady upcoming yeah, Tom. Yeah, and, and how well does that work out for defensive Come on players? Now. Challenge Brady. How well does that work out? I'm jacked hope, up to I watch hope, the Bucks win by like three touchdowns. I hope Alex Smith talked to Chase Young in the locker room and was like, dude, what are you doing? Why the would you fire already this done. guy up? He already, it's already been mic'd up, so <laughs> too late. I'd nice say job, if, Tom does, if, Tom, if Brady doesn't already have the motivation in the world to win this year, first year of the Patriots, all that stuff. Like, that's already been motivation this year. Then you add some Chase Young rookie guy. Obviously, he knows who he is. But, like, dude, that's never worked in the past. Never. Ever. Well, how, about, how about at the Combine when Chase Young, first thing he said was, who's the one quarterback you want to sack? Tom Brady. That's another bit of fuel for Brady. I mean. He gets the it, shot. He gets the <laughs> shot. He got it. <laughs> it's coming. Uh, and honestly, like, they earned it. We've, we talked about the football team the football team, the most broad name in sports. The football team. We talked about the football team uh, a couple weeks ago. At least me and Jared did. Al, I don't know if you were on the episode or not, but the Washington football team kind of is showing some spurts of being a team that might be something down the line in the next yeah, couple of years. Down, down the line, yes. Well, they got pieces. Think... They got young pieces. Their, def- their defense is fast explosive. I'll give him that. And they have a few pieces on offense with McLaurin and Gibson and whatnot, but I just don't see it this weekend. I I don't either, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me if they won. It would surprise me. Wouldn't shock me. Two different levels of surprise. I I think they'll they'll compete. I think they'll compete, but they're not going to be, they're not beating the Bucs. There's no way. All right. Well, continue with the quarterback conversations. If you just were in on Tom Brady. Mm Mm-hmm. There was a report last week before the game that the Patriots were going to move on from Cam after this season. And afterwards, Bill Belichick was asked about it because, you know, it's a big story. And Bill does his Bill thing, gets all pissy up there. First of all, I really don't think that Bill has the right to be pissed about that because that's if that report's out there, I mean, what are you going to do? You have to ask the coach of the New England Patriots if you're going to (laughs) be moving on from your quarterback. Is Cam Cam really not going to be back? Well, you have to go ask Adam about that one. Look, look, I don't know about that one. You're just going to have to talk to – you're just going to have to wait. Now is not the time. He was was all snarky about it, but that left the question open whether or not Cam's going to be back, and it worried me. He's not coming. He's not coming back. Nope. Bye-bye, Cam. Bye-bye. Bye. But, Bye. But here's the thing. Bye. Bye. Wouldn't it, I don't want him back. Big Cam Newton fan. I don't want him back. I just I think the game is passed him by. I think his body is worn down at this point. We saw his inaccuracy. We saw that he just doesn't have that decision making skill that Tom Brady did in the pocket to get rid of the football fast. He holds on to the ball for too long. He's got no pocket awareness. But it wouldn't shock me if the Patriots decided to keep Cam for the year mm. and draft somebody in the first round just to keep a veteran quarterback ahead of him mm. next season before that guy potentially takes over. Because there's a handful but, of guys in this draft that you have to take. Yeah, but if you're, if you're Bill and you saw the way he threw the ball this year, I mean, this has to be a perfect scenario, obviously, but like, wouldn't you rather trade for Jimmy G if available? 
than keep Cam. Around. I feel like Cam is the absolute last option to build. But like, the problem is he has to make that decision early because Cam basically came out and said like, I'm not making that decision to make mistake twice. Like he signed so late that he couldn't learn the offense. Now, do I think Cam could be better next year than this year in the offense? Yes, I do. But the problem is he still can't throw the football. Like it's like saying Tim Tebow could be better year one versus year like year two versus year one. Great, but he can't throw the football. So like it doesn't even matter. I don't want Cam back. It makes no sense at all. Especially with the with the options that are out there. Like even mm-hmm. aside from just like looking in the draft. Because Jacoby Brissett, I'd rather Jacoby Brissett come back for a year. And like, he knows the offense. Exactly. Like I'd rather someone like that. Jacoby Brissett for a year or two in a competition with a young kid. And if he comes in and wins the job from Brissett, fine. But like one, don't bring Hoyer back. Thank you very much. You don't bring Jared Stidham back. You don't bring Cam Newton back. You fresh start. You clearly Stidham sucks if they don't let him play at all. And <laughs> Stidham must be like, bad. Stidham must be terrible <laughs> because they didn't even let him play in the meaning, most meaningless game ever, and they won't even let him sniff the field unless it's actual garbage time. So they're all gone. Bye. Smell you later. Bring in someone like Jimmy G, Jacoby Brissett, Philip Rivers is a free agent. You could even do that if he's not happy in Indy. Like. There's options out there, Mariota. Like, there's other ways to do what you're talking about other than Cam Newton. And not only that, it's just – I was going to say, Al, you, you look like you're about I, to say I, something. <laughs> well, I, I want to I think, think about – I'm trying to think about how I want to put this. Like, Cam Newton just – you feel for Cam Newton because he was a good guy while he was here. He said all the right things. He worked hard. But at the same time, Quags, I mean, you – hit the nail on the head with everything he just he's not an Pretty NFL usual. quarterback I say, don't make his head bigger than <laughs> he's just is. not listen I, listen you know as well as I do Jared I'm the first one to tell Quags when his idea stinks <laughs> aka the James Harden for Jalen Brown trade but hey keep <laughs> keep telling me it stinks keep telling me it stinks I'm gonna I'm gonna jump back on that trade <laughs> and and I'm gonna call you an idiot every time you do but I'm gonna come push you off of here's it. here's something I know Cam wouldn't do this but if he had no other options and you said, and the Patriots said to him, we'll bring you back in a backup role. Would you take that? Would you take Cam as your backup? I know it's not. Oh, he's a I good backup for sure. I, I mean, he's I a solid backup. Likely. Yeah. But like, isn't it tempting if Cam's here just to start him? Like that's the problem is like Cam could have been a backup to Stidham. I mean, clearly Stidham was that bad, but like if Jimmy G a rookie and Cam Newton come in, are they going to keep three quarterbacks? No. Like would they? No. So then at that point, you're cutting Cam, right? Hopefully. Like, you're cutting Cam. Probably because Stidham, you've got Stidham now for a couple more years at nearly nothing. So they, Oh, he's going to be cut. They're going to cut him. They don't care. They're just gonna St- cut well, Stidham, Stidham's going to be on the bottom of the roster, and he can hold that backup role with very little salary, very little cap hit. Yeah, but wouldn't you want – would you rather, though, like, if he's holding the backup role and you bring in someone like Jimmy G, then you're not going to draft somebody? Like, well, that's the thing. No matter what they do this offseason, there's, there's no quarterback that's going to make me think that they can be the guy long-term because if there's another quarterback coming in, that means that they haven't been great somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And I think a guy, the only guy that I might feel 100% comfortable with for a long-term plan, and not even 100%, maybe 70%, is Marcus Mariota because he's still young and we know he has talent. Oh, Jimmy G too, friend. Come on, Jimmy G. Well, Jimmy was, G's well, 31 and he keeps getting hurt. This is, this is also true. But going back to it for a second, I know you guys are talking about the draft. I want you guys to think about something. Patriots have the 15th overall pick. 15, correct? Not 14, but 15, I'm pretty sure, 15, right? 15 or 14. Let me, let me look it I up. I thought it was 14. I thought it was 14, look, too. Look, look, look that up real quick. But here's the thing. The first 10 picks in the draft, how do you know a quarterback's even going to be around? Because let's go through the top 10 just real quick. Jaguars, obviously going to take Trevor Lawrence, probably number one, unless by some miracle they take Justin Fields. It's going to be one they of won. those two. They the won't. Jets, the Jets are going to take a quarterback. They're going to take Justin. But will Fields. they though? That's a that's a question. They, they probably because Trevor, will. Well, because Trevor Lawrence is literally the only sure thing in that draft. But they're going to still take a quarterback because maybe they'll want to trade Sam Darnold for value. I don't know. But that but, you de- would, but that really depends. I really don't know if they're going to take a quarterback. What yeah, then? Then what? Then what position? Then guys, what position are they going to go for? Then they need Lineman. help anywhere else. They need help everywhere else. Alignment number two. Eh, I don't know. What receiver. That. Receiver. I, all right, fine. Let's Devonta keep going. Smith. Devonta let's, Smith, number two. Let's, let's keep going. I don't know about that. Let's keep going down the list. Dolphins at three. I know they have Tua. They're taking a quarterback. They're probably going to take a quarterback to have a little QB competition because they're convinced Tua is not the guy right now. Okay. Falcons. Matt. I don't Ryan. even. I don't even know about that. Matt, Matt Ryan's going to be out the door. 
So they're probably going to draft a quarterback to, you know, be the future of the franchise. So that right there. Quarterbacks yeah. going first four picks. Like, what? I'm, I'm I, don't, saying I don't think the, the Dolphins the are taking a quarterback. Picks, the first four, but there's a possibility. I'm saying I think those one are possibilities. Four. One and four are like likely quarterbacks. If the Jets don't take a quarterback, then the Jets are the Jets. They're just horrible. But, yes, they're probably going to Jets it. But what else? Let's see. Bengals aren't going to take a quarterback. Eagles won't take a quarterback. Lions, if Matt Stafford goes, probably going to take a quarterback would be my guess. Okay, so I'd, I'd say Man. right now, down at this pick, we've got, uh, I would say, three quarterbacks off the board. Four, I'll, I'll give you four. So then what do you go for? Do you go for Kyle Pitts out of Florida? Or where, wherever, he, wherever he's from? I think he's from Florida, right? Like I, well, I, I genuinely think that where, where, wherever you are, 14-15, um, Bama quarterback, Mac Jones, right? Yes, I, I think Mac I, Jones will I, be available. Genuinely, I genuinely think Mac Jones will be available at, say, 14 or 15. You take Mac Jones at 14 and 15. Like, you t- that's where you take – if you can have a legit quarterback like that at 14, 15, and a league that's all quarterback-driven, you take him. Or if you have to trade up to get a quarterback, Bill has – it's like, this is where I'm going to be mad at Bill if he doesn't do something in that first round for a quarterback or at least a tight end. Like, if you take a high-end tight end in the first round and you want to take quarterback later – I might be okay with that too, especially if you're going to bring in someone like Jimmy G or Mariota, but like you need someone either at a high end tight end, even though Asiasi looks like he could potentially play, but like you either high end tight end or a quarterback with that first pick. And that's it. That's all. That's all I'm accepting. What about, hold on. What about this? What about a wide receiver like a Jalen Hurdle or something? Oh, they don't take, they don't take good receivers in the first. I'm, I'm oh, just, I, don't, I don't want Bill. I don't want Bill, I don't want Bill anywhere near a receiver, receiver again. No, 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 no. That track record. No, no, don't touch no drafting receivers. Way. And nope. Then you better go out and you better sign either Allen Robinson or Will Fuller or Juju Corey Davis. Schuster That's or fine. Corey Davis. Fine. That's then you better Chris, go out or Chris and sign. Godwin. Yeah, Chris, Chris Godwin, Godwin too. too. Like you, that's how Bill should be building the receiving core. Sign him because yes. he cannot draft a receiver to save his life. Yeah. And another, another quarterback who still might be available, very might well be available is Kyle Trask. There's, I mean, a quarterback, a quarterback is going to be available for them. A top quarterback is going to be available for them at their pick. You know who, I you know who I'd also them. be intrigued with in the league now? Denver keeps talking about being done with Drew Locke. I'd take a shot at Drew Locke. Like he's shown some uh, promise with like no coaching. Yeah. Jared, you're taking a shot at it with everybody. Sam Darnold, Carson Wentz. Like, Allen, I, I Allen. Mean, we don't have a real quarterback. Yeah, we everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. But you want to take damaged goods and Sam Darnold and Carson Wentz? How I would take Sam Walker? Darnold. Sam Darnold's would got you talent. Take Darnold. I, I because he's been under Adam Gaze's coaching. Exactly. Yeah, he's damaged. Only, so he's doing all that with no coaching. If look, Sam, look what they if look, Sam look Darnold, how the Jets looked at the end of the season. With if Sam, Sam if Sam Darnold is your absolute last You're option, insane. then fine. Then You're fine. Insane. He's, he's up the list for me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm insane You're because insane I that you don't want Matt Stafford or Jimmy Garoppolo. You're insane I'm that you insane. don't want Sam Darnold. He's my I third option. Not. He's my third choice. It's Matt Stafford, Jimmy G, Sam Darnold, who's Sam 23 Darnold. years old. And the age has a lot to do with it. He's 23. He's younger Dude. than Josh Allen. He was supposed to be better than Josh Allen. And they all, all right. work out together. Put him in the right situation. He's probably as good as Josh Allen, if not a little, a little worse. If you Wouldn't don't you take that a heartbeat? If you don't get Stafford, Garoppolo, or the young quarterback you want in the draft, then fine. I'll, I'll take Sam Darnold and pray for the best. Okay, no, I'd rather have the young – I want the young quarterback and Sam Darnold. Make them both come in and play. I, like, want, the, I want the drafted quarterback. My, my, draft, no matter who you bring in, Nick, and now, whoever you bring in, you got to draft a young quarterback against that, no matter what. You're drafting a quarterback and bringing in Carson Wentz, Sam Darnold. Well, someone like well this is the bridge here because now we're going to talk about the perfect Patriots offseason. My perfect Patriots offseason. Drive to quarterback in the first round. Tom Brady comes home. What? <laughs> well, no, not even that. No, no, I'm done. He is coming back next year. They play him. He is. He's coming back. They better be July. decent. They better be somewhat decent when they come back to July. <laughs> there, are, there are reports that Bill is going to be aggressive this offseason. He saw what it was. He saw what the team looked like this year with his regular game plan for the offseason. Yeah. And, Nick, let's preface this, too, with what our ideal situation they have like the third most cap space going into the offseason. They've got a lot they have of room. A crap ton of picks. That first round pick's the highest they've had in a very long time. And they have some guys coming out like um, who was it? Was it Chung? Which opt out? No, it was I mean it's Brandon Bolden, but like that's already one opt in that he said he's coming back next year. I believe Patrick Chung said he probably wants to play. Devin McCourty already said that he wants to play next year. You have Lawrence Guy who said he wants to be back here next year. He's a free agent. Like you have a ton of free agents you have to worry about. 
Bill's in a really good place that if he really knows what he's doing, and I believe he does, no matter what we talk about in a second, like they're in a really good spot for this offseason. We'll talk about the offensive line too, because it's part of my perfect offseason. You either re-sign David Andrews or Joe Tooney. One of those two guys. Who would, you ra- who would you rather in that situation? Who would I rather? I, Joe Tooney's wildly talented, but I would take David Andrews because center is just a crazy underrated position in the NFL. And there, you see how the locker room loves him. First of all, he's a massive yeah. leader. And with a young quarterback, you need a reliable center. And, right, you, can, and, and, and you can get Tooney's contract off the books because Tooney's contract, I think, was like the largest one in 2020. They're going to pay him an arm and a, gonna pay him an arm and a leg. Well, yeah, Joe Tooney, I, I wouldn't be shocked if Joe Tooney ends up as the highest paid guard in the NFL this offseason. Giants will, Giants will pay him. Probably, to be honest with you. But Joe Judge will pay him. I was going to say Joe Judge. But anyway, this is what I was saying. This is perfect case, best case scenario. You, you bring back one of those guys, preferably uh, David Andrews. You draft probably either a Mac Jones or a Kyle Trask in the first round. Those, one of those two might be available. Those are realistic um, names, yep. Realistic names. And then you, you bring in a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo to be the bridge. Because, I, frankly, with all the injuries, I don't think Jimmy G's career is going to last too much longer, to be honest with you. And but two, three years. You can get out two, of three years, yeah. Bridge quarterback. Top that off with Chris Godwin is my number one receiver I would take, mm-hmm. and bring in Hunter Henry. That is the perfect offseason. See, I think I agree with most of that. Um, I also think a big part of this, and this is not being talked about a lot, if you do all that, you also need to re-sign Nick Folk. And I never thought I'd say that. But <laughs> Nick Folk the league. <laughs> is one of the best kickers in the league right now. And, like, you look at even Steven Goskowski, clearly was a decent decision, right? He's been on and off the team and, and not playing well, whatever. Clearly, this rookie they drafted isn't going to do anything. So, you, I think re-signing Nick Folk with all those other moves, right? Like, that makes this team pretty solid. Nick Folk was a very reliable kicker this year. They're, they're not, they're not going to do it, though, because they put Roberto Aguayo on the practice squad for next year. They basically gave him a contract for next year. So, they think Aguayo is going to be the guy in 2021. So, bye-bye, Nick Folk. By the way. Which is a bummer. Which is a bummer. I know. It I, is. I, like, I think he was actually a legitimate kicker this year. Him and Jake Bailey were, like, the two of the best things in your team. Very legit. Yeah. yeah. Hey, by the way, you know when the last time uh, Nick Folk missed a kick was in 2020? Game one. Week two against the Seattle Seahawks in the first half. After that, he went 26 for 26. Insane. It All right. List them, off. list them off real quick because we got to move on to the last segment. Uh, right. Or le- final two segments, Jared. For what? Perfect off season. Yes. Oh, um, bang, 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 bang. I want, like you said, draft a quarterback. I think ideal, same situation. Draft a quarterback. One of those two guys will be there. Um, give me a tight end, whether it's Najoku, Hunter Henry, one of those guys. I think you need a legitimate tight end to play with Asiasi. I think he still can have, be decent. Um, find a third running back because I'm guessing you're going to lose James White and probably Burkhead. So find a third running back option with Sony Michelle. Um, obviously re-sign Andrews, I think is a big one. Um, and then I, I, I want another receiver in the draft just down at the bottom. Like I want, I want him to pull a Belichick and find the next like Gunnar Olszewski, like Julian just, Edelman. Just I want not some, in the first round. Just not in the first <laughs> round. Like <laughs> just not in the first round. Um, yeah, no, that's a hundred percent it. And then maybe find a quarterback. Just okay. Find, All right. Quarterback. All right. I'll list mine off quick. Stafford or Jimmy G Hunter Henry, hundred percent for a tight end. Juju Smith Schuster. Corey Davis, move Edelman. If Edelman's healthy, have him be number three receiver. Him and Myers, whichever combination you want, get rid of Nikhil Harry because Nikhil Harry's a bust. He's not going anywhere. I know, I know. But if you can get something for him, get him. And then if you're going to draft, give me Mac Jones or give me Zach Wilson. I know Wilson's probably more unrealistic, but if he, it's again, it's ideal. So there's mine. All right. So real quick, I wanted to revisit this James Harden conversation. Idiot. After what I've seen from Jalen Brown. Boob. You are such a boob. I think that James Harden would work here. Jalen Brown, he might. He might. But Jalen Brown has been a stud since game one of these first eight games of the season. I've changed my mind. If it's going to take Jalen Brown to get James Harden, don't do it. Good. I think him and Jason Tatum have great chemistry. They're going to work out very well together for a long time. But with that being said, anything else other than James <sighs> Harden, or Jason oh. Tate. I mean, I mean, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. I make that trade in a second. But like Kemba Walker, see ya. See, Rob Williams. I don't, know if I, I don't think I do it. No, no, I don't do that. no, 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 no. Marcus Smart, James Harden is that's no. 
James Harden is Kyrie all over again. He's going to come here. He's going to be here because he has to because of his contract. And at the end of it, he's going to go, I don't want to play here. We don't have good strip clubs in Boston. Like, I'm, and this is a legitimate thing. Like, I'm not even joking. Like, they don't have a good party scene for him. He, he's a toxic cancer in the locker room. I don't want James Harden. Like, I don't want him. Absolutely not. No. James, Hard- James Harden's going to look good in Toronto or he's going to look good in Philly? Because that's the two places I think he's going to end up. Toronto and- needs him because they're bad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's they're not bad, Clearly, Serge Ibaka and, and Marc Gasol were, like, the glue for that team. Yeah. Like, I know. they're if both Fred, gone. Look what happened. And Fred Van Fleet, I think, dropped 30 or whatever it was last night when the Celtics played the Raptors, and the Raptors got creamed until the very end when they made yep. up some ground. But it was – Yeah, because they put the main red claws in. Like, come on now. Yeah, in, in conclusion, do not go get James Harden. Just don't get him. Leave him alone. Let him go be trash somewhere else. Let him go affect be another – trash. He's one of the else. best in the NBA. Trash is him. it – Tr- trash as in he's going to destroy a franchise. Nick, you know, why, you know why it doesn't work? Because you're building – you're not really building to win right now as much as you might think they can, and I, I do believe there's a chance. But, like – Well, Jason I'm Tatum, tired Jalen of talking Brown, about winning in the future keep... with this team because we've been doing this since 2014. They every, are – Every single season, we're one piece away. We're one piece away. We're one well, piece away. To be fair, they weren't one piece away when they had – when they made the Kyrie and Gordon Hayward thing happen. They just – Kyrie was a cancer. Like – they were supposed to be a, a massive contender. Still didn't get the for, banner. And Hayward broke no, his leg. No, because Kyrie's fault and Hayward's a fragile bastard. But, like, <laughs> that's, I don't put that on Danny Ainge. He made the moves. He did. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Listen, no. I mean, I do know. You, I'm you taking James You got Kyrie Hart. for nothing. You got Kyrie Irving for nothing, and you signed Gordon Hayward. If, if you that, can trade right, – if it takes Kemba Walker and one other piece to get James Harden, what's the, I'm doing What's the other piece? What's the other piece? If it's Rob Williams, so be it. No, no, nope. so no. be it. If you no. want to get rid, if you want to get rid of the younger guards, if you want to get rid of, I'm not saying it's going to be this, but if you want to get rid of a Romeo Langford or a Carson Edwards, guys that are young and have upside as part of the deal, then Tremont I'm Waters. with you there. Tremont yep. Waters, yes, another guy. But I'd even consider Grant Williams in a deal. If the, oh, if the right deal. Gr- Grant Williams, okay, fine, but not Robert Williams. Robert Williams has shown that he belongs on the floor in a backup center role. Belongs on the floor long, as a backup. But no, but it, okay, now. <laughs> as but in a long good term, backup center. Let's see, long right term, now. I think he can start. Long term, I think he's a starting center in this league. He's so athletic. He's only right. 23. That's right. you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. You clearly don't watch basketball. That's um, really what I'm telling you. Yes. <laughs> oh, contraire. <laughs> you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. No, I'm wrong doing here. it in a second. Yeah. I'm making that move in a second. I'm also smoking James, James Harden puts up right now, so. nothing but points. <laughs> I haven't looked at that since draft night. <laughs> <laughs> Figured. James Harden. <laughs> which, which we knew you would do. And that's what I said. That was my preface even going to the league. I was like, I'm not going to oh, look at this. I know. James Harden does nothing but puts up points. You add that. If you, if you can take – if you can get him on your team without costing Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown, I think you do it. Now, we're going to finish off the show here. Our locks of the week, doing lines. My line, Alabama, Ohio State. Ohio State looks so damn good against Clemson. Justin Fields looks so damn good against Clemson. Take that plus seven and a half. That's a lock. That's a hell of a line. You see how good Justin Fields looked last week? Mm-hmm. Looks like a looks stud. Good. Al, well, do you have anything? questioning whether they should go number one like, after that. Yeah. <laughs> like, What? Go to Jared first because I'm I'm between two games and I'll make a pick in a sec. Go to Jared I, first. We were just talking about these guys, the old football team. They are eight and a half point underdogs. The spread. Yeah, lock it in. They're going to cover that. Eight and a they half. Are gonna, they are going to cover that spread. I like that. I kind of like. The Bucks that. are going to. The Bucks are going to win. I'm not saying the football team is going to beat Tom Brady. People are underrating their defense. Chase Young's had a monster season. Lock it in. Washington football team covers the eight and a half spread. Al, what do you have for the line on the Chicago New Orleans game? Because I got a different line for Tampa and Washington on my end. What do you have for that line for Chicago and New Orleans? Chicago and New Orleans. Whatever the line is, take New Orleans because Chicago stinks. They're lucky to even be in the playoffs. The Saints are going to roll through the first game. Take the Saints. Drew Brees is fair swan song. Yeah, he is reported to retire. Couch Guys Sports Podcast, episode number 189 in the books. Nick Qualia, Jared Scally, Al Nahian. Guys, subscribe on the YouTube channel. Rate and subscribe on iTunes. The ratings have been awesome, so keep that up. Rate and subscribe on iTunes. And then follow 
the entire website on Twitter at Couch Guys Sports. Check out the blogs, couchguysports.com, and the podcast Twitter at Couch Guy Podcast. Nick Qualia, Jared Scally, Alan Nahigian. Guys, we'll talk to you next week. Thanks for watching, and thanks for listening. See you guys.